Welcome to the Nitwits, a weekly roundtable discussion on the Penn State Nittany Lions, now in its 26th season. Our panel features a longtime Penn State media and Nitwits tag team. Neil Verdell of the Altoona Mirror and Mark Brennan of Lions 24-7 with Fight on State. The Nitwits are hosted by WTAJ's Ryan Risky. And each week we welcome a former Nittany Lion as our special guest analyst. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. By DeLeo Games, serving the community since 1945. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning by Reed and Solani Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntingdon. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. By Remax Results Realty Group, committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service. By Dorman's Jewelry, the answer is always Dorman's. By Star Beverage, no matter what type of weather, we are a convenient drive through one-stop beer store. By Brent Hogan Electrical Services, lighting the way for you. By Novacare, Altoona and State College, the power of physical therapy. By Fullington Tours, offering round-trip transportation to and from Beaver Stadium from locations in State College and Altoona. By Blair Candy Company, the one-stop shop for all your tailgating needs, candy, snacks, paper supplies, and more. By Harry's Construction, if you can dream it, we can create it. By Lions 24-7 with Fight on State, your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State Game Day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Monday. A 63-7 dismantling of Delaware has Penn State sitting at 2-0 on the season, heading into Big Ten play next week. We break down the big win. Nittany Nation Overtime is next. Welcome into Nittany Nation Overtime. I'm your host, Ryan Risky. I'm joined by Mark Brennan, Neil Rudell, and former Penn State wide receiver Joe Nastasi. Guys, a lot to like from this 63-7 win. Well, uh, there was no line on the game until real shortly beforehand. Turned out to be 40, and it still wasn't enough mm -hmm. for Delaware. I thought Penn State, um, you know, they, they accomplished what they wanted to accomplish. It, it should have been a blowout, and it was. I thought Delaware competed for a while in the first half. Uh, Penn State started better, uh, got the ball to the tight end, uh, mixed in some things that they didn't do all that well in the first game. Yeah, I think the two keys to that game, number one, you get out of it relatively healthy. Jalen Reed looked like he was bumped up a little bit, but they were able to win relatively easy without having to bring some of those guys, Kaziah Izzard, who missed a couple games. Uh, they were able to get through that thing healthy going into the Big Ten schedule. And then number two, the ability to go so deep into your bench and get a lot of these young players snaps. Listen, you know, we've talked a lot about how deep this team is, but it has to be functional depth. Mm -hmm. And to be able to get some of those young kids out there and get, get a, a bunch of playing time was big. I think the ability of Bo Pribula to get out there and do some of the things he did. You're only, it's a cliche, but it's true. You're only ever one snap away from that second team QB, and to get Bo out there to do some things was good. There's no doubt you, you get a lot of the backups, a lot of the guys that, you know, and, and now you don't even want to call them backups. I mean, they're just starters for the, you know, for like the next man up mentality. And I mean, when you have a big program like that and you're going to win, you have to rely on those guys throughout the season. They'll be starters at some point in time. Uh, so that's always good. It's always good a game like this to keep it really clean. You know, make sure you're not making big mistakes, letting the team hang around, not that there were any, any kind of threat of a loss, but as a coach, you want to see, you know, every snap clean, execute, and do what they had to do. And I think they took care of business yesterday. Yeah, and I think one of the most important things, it's, it's how many snaps the second and third string guys got. You know, they didn't come in the last five minutes of the fourth quarter. They were in second, third drive of the third quarter. 
I think James has gotten better at this. He, he established it as a priority even a couple years ago. He said it's better to lose a shutout and play your second unit than it is. He said ego would come into play with some, some uh, coaches, in, sure. including him. Uh, and now, I, you know, some of the playing time had been so guarded. I thought it was good. They got Aller, you know, one series in the second half and got him out of there. And, and, then, and, not yeah. only, and that got to the progression, not only of Prabula, but Smolik later on. Yeah, one thing that wasn't great is that offensively they had 91 snaps or 90 plus snaps. Defensively, they only had like 40. So, and that's not Penn State's fault. What are you mm -hmm. supposed to do? You're controlling the ball, you're marching up and down the field. So when we talk about building that depth, offensively, those guys got a ton of snaps. But I think when we see the snap counts come out, defensively, they probably would have, in an ideal world, would have liked to get some of those kids more snaps, but it just didn't work out that way. The other thing, I was hoping somewhere along the way that that field goal unit would, would be trotted out there. But, but what are you going to do? You mm -hmm. make eight red zone trips, score eight touchdowns. You can't ask these kids not, to, not to, to, to give their best. But now you're going into Illinois, and you don't know where that field goal unit is right now. Right. Yeah, special teams. Always, you know, that's just, that's just how it is. Because it's going to come down. We already know there's going to be games that are won and lost by special teams, and we've got to see them tested out there. Well, they passed on that. You know, it was early on, it was One, seven nothing. Yeah. It was uh, very sh uh, fourth and real short. They went for it. It was maybe a time that they could have gotten Falcons uh, a real field goal. Mm -hmm. No, I think going back to the amount of snaps they played on offense, yeah. you know, it was kind of a more conservative game. There weren't any long explosive plays. Their longest play from scrimmage was 26 yards, a touchdown, or a completion to Keandre Lambert Smith. And since they accomplished what they wanted to, and we saw Drew Aller completed 84% of his passes. Yeah. Well, listen, I mean, Yursic is clearly keeping things in his back pocket. Mm. If you look at Drew Aller, 55 passes, only one of them has gone more than 20 yards downfield, and that was a 72-yard touchdown uh, to Keandre, Keandre Lambert-Smith. Now, what is that telling you? Yeah, this guy could use his arm strength in the short and medium zones to do really good things, but they're waiting for him to pop some long things, like we saw in that Texas-Alabama mm -hmm. game. You saw sooner or later Penn State's going to start going downfield, and I like the fact that Yursich hasn't put that on tape yet for anybody else to see. There were a couple of plays where it looked like he was waiting to gun it downfield, and then he did a little check, check down, down, which mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong to do. This wasn't the kind of game where you want to unleash those kind of plays. Joe, what are yeah, you yeah. seeing from Drew, I mean, as a former receiver, how he sees the field? I know he hasn't well, maybe chucked it deep, but I think yeah. he's reading defense is great. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you could see he's, he's got a lot of presence back there. That's number one. You can really see that he's comfortable. He climbs a pocket. A lot of guys, especially younger guys, they won't climb it. They'll run from it. Mm -hmm. You could see him, and, and, you know, I was watching uh, Shador Sanders um, at Colorado. It, similar, they, they use their feet to throw it. They keep their head downfield. He's moving to create a little bit more time. So that's an offensive lineman's dream is a quarterback that can move around a little bit, and he's doing it so they can get it downfield. So I, I really I like his presence to, of, of everything. Great arm, and, he'll, and, and him not throwing – the long ball doesn't necessarily mean he can. He's just, he he's just taking yeah. what he's got, and, and he's making smart plays and keeping the percentages up. And they could be just scratching the surface on what he can do. You know, we're all, as we said, we're only seeing these medium and short passes. Sure. I like what he's doing on the run, though. He's done it two Correct. weeks in a row where he's rolling. All of a sudden, somebody's breaking free. Yesterday, it was Cephas. Uh, that's been one maybe his uh, most impressive pass. He does when he does what I'm saying when he's climbing the pocket and moving. He can move both ways and throw it downfield, which not every quarterback can do, you know, but he's very, very athletic with that. Yeah, just a lot to like offensively from this. And coming up after the break, we're going to discuss the run game and Penn State getting the tight ends involved in the pass game. Stay with us. The Nitwits are being brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James a firm foundation for your financial future. By DeLeo Games, serving the community since 1945. By Reed and Selaney Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntington. And by McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. All right, welcome back into Nittany Nation Overtime. Penn State puts up 63 points, guys, and there's a lot to like. They got the tight ends involved, and so they want to start with the run game. 315 rushing yards, six touchdowns, 
And four players had more than 45 rushing yards. Yeah, it was interesting on Tuesday, James Franklin proactively said uh, he wanted to make sure that Catron Allen uh, was getting enough uh, recognition. And I don't think any of us, were, once he said that and then he further explained it on, uh, on Wednesday, I don't think any of us were surprised when Catron was announced as the starter. And I think they were in a really good spot there where they have won 1A, however you want to put that with him and Nick Singleton. And to be able to get both of those guys going, Catron Allen rushing from over 100 yards, Nick Singleton scoring three touchdowns after the game, Singleton explaining he was this close on a couple of those plays. He felt he was a little frustrated in himself that he didn't bust some of those long. Uh, but his time will come. But I also think it's really cool that both of these guys are embracing the two tailback role because mm -hmm. or, or approach because it, that is going to help you in, in October, in November, when, when other backs are getting worn down. And these guys mm -hmm. are both physical backs, so I think playing both of them is good. And James took it a step further afterwards and saying, this is going to help them for their post-college career. It's and true. And, you know, you look at Saquon and uh, Miles Sanders, these guys weren't overused in college. Yeah. Right, and it's also another one of those things that you see a lot of running backs in college now. Like They might have the first couple good years in the NFL, however, then they run into the problem where they start getting injured from the use, and then when it's contract time, they don't have as much leverage, and that could really help them out going down the road. Yeah, you got to watch the tread, you know, like uh, they, those guys, you guys all said it correct, you know, it's that and also, you know, keeping the room happy. I mean, you've, you've got some amazing kids, like, you know, you look at the quarterback room, they, those, Bo has to play. I mean, you have to play him. He's going to have to play at some point in time, but if not, these guys are, you know, I don't want to call it selfish, but they're down, they're down the road. I mean, it's just this is the world we live in now with college football. Your ones and twos have to be, like you said, one and one A's. They can't be considered backups. And well, really, so whoever is announces the starting running back on the video board, it really, I mean, the other guy's getting the next the hot, series. It's, it's the hot hand. Yeah, it's well, the they hot actually, hand for them. They, they oh, yeah. announced both of them in the Rose Bowl, which I think is probably, I mean, what is there a limit on who you could yeah. announce up yeah, on, the, on the board? They control it. Yeah, <laughs> now, we don't know. I mean, they also announced the wrong starting lineup for the offensive line, so who Play knows what 12. the heck's going yeah. on there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, whoever gets it started really doesn't matter. They're both going to get even snaps, and even though they haven't broken that big run yet, they're both still averaging more than five yards a carry. Well, and the other thing with the running backs is when you talk about next level, you know, there's an issue in the NFL with with running backs, you know, in terms of these guys getting paid. So I'm sure as many advantages as you can have as a college player coming out of it would be good. And then another avenue of the offense to discuss, yeah. the tight ends were used much more in the passing game than in week one where Tyler Warren had one catch for seven yards. And then, you know, everyone's talking about the tight ends not being involved in first play from scrimmage, seven yard pass to Theo Johnson. Yeah, and then, they, I mean, the other thing, they, uh, the, the accuracy of Aller is just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. He targeted Warren six times, six catches. I mean, that's telling you that, that these guys are kind of go-to guys for him. And that's one of the things we talk about the running backs. I think you're going to see that with those two tight ends as well, yeah. that there may be one game where Tyler Warren has more catches. There may be one game where Theo has more catches. And, and what you're going to see is – opposing defense is being forced to make choices right when you try to take this away and Joe you're the coach mm -hmm. when you try to take this away okay we're gonna swing to this right. and I mean it's just right. the options are crazy and that's where you know some one day like we're talking about the backs getting equal carries or or playing time you know you as a defense coordinator you can take certain things away but that's where you have to have every all the other pieces of the puzzle and I think that's where Penn State has a benefit you know we do having that run game you start to get one dimension or you have a guy you can bracket him. You could take that guy away on the edge a little bit. It's harder to get him the ball. You know, you have to be creative as a coach to get it to him. But when we have other weapons, it's, it's better. And that's where you see the ball getting spread around a little bit. Well, they ran for 315 yards yesterday. And I thought it was interesting that we didn't get Johnson afterwards, but we got Warren. And he was taking as much pride in the run game mm -hmm. and the blocking. They're part of this jumbo set. It's been really effective right. the last couple of years it's after huge. it hadn't been for a while. Uh, and they're putting both tight ends back there. It's, it's, they're really good at the goal right. line. Yeah, I could give a shout out to the O-line too. I think uh, there, there was some sickness going through the program last week. Venga Ioni comes in and gets a start at, at left guard. And then I loved what they did. They, they moved Venga over to right guard to, to give Sal Warmly a break. And then you bring in J.B. Nelson. And then you bring in Drew Shelton at both of those tackle positions. And now what are you seeing? 
you're seeing offensive linemen being able to get breaks during the game. Mm -hmm. It's not that long ago where they were struggling to field five decent offensive linemen. Right. And the fact that they were able to get Olu off the field yeah. for the entire second half, yeah. I think that was just great. Right. Right? They didn't need them. No, and, and that's a good problem to have where, you know, these you don't really need them and you're getting the other guys more snaps because you never know when someone's going to need to jump in. Yeah, Nick Dawkins also got some snaps, too, at center, which I think, again, another thing that's important. Hunter Norzad has played well at center for you. He's, played, mm -hmm. he's been good for two years at those inside positions. We haven't seen a lot in Nick. He's been bumped up, but you know, it's always good to, to get that backup center some, some, some snaps. And Nick, for people who don't know, the son of Daryl Dawkins, That's Dawkins right. Chocolate Thunder. That's right. Absolutely. we got to take another break right now. When we come back, we're going to all give our thoughts on the future of Power 5 conferences potentially playing FCS opponents in non-conference play. Stay with us. The Nitwits are being brought to you by Monarch Cleaners. For all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning. By REMAX Results Realty Group. Committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service by Dorman's Jewelry. The answer is always Dorman's. And by Star Beverage. No matter what type of weather, we are a convenient drive through one-stop beer store. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. Welcome back into Nittany Nation Overtime. Penn State dismantles FCS opponent Delaware 63-7. Guys, I'm just curious of your thoughts on them playing an FCS team and the future of that. Well, first of all, I want to <laughs> um, uh -oh. I'm not crazy about it. I think it's going to depend on what happens with the Big Ten, how many conference games are going to be played. Uh, I, I just don't think you get uh, people are all that excited about Delaware. You do get some experience for people, but uh, I think when you're dipping, you should dip to the MAC, I guess, uh, at the lower end of it. I just think Penn State is... You know, such a, a higher class of, of program uh, qual talent wise. Than I, I, I hate to I say I it. agree with Neil on yeah, that, right. but, <laughs> but I agree with him. But I, let, yeah. let me say this, though. I was blown away by that crowd. Yeah. I mean, right. I, I mean, you're, you're coming off of a nighttime game um, you know, against a power five opponent. You're opening at the Big Ten. The next home game is the white game. I thought this would be yeah. a game that a lot of people just took off. Weather. And yeah, I mean, yeah. they, they yeah. said 108,000. Maybe it wasn't quite that, but I'll bet you it was over 100,000. And for that to happen against for a game against Delaware, so we can talk all we want. Do these games mm -hmm. make sense? Do they not? Yeah. Hey, listen, the, the people were in the stands to, to see it. You see, uh, you know, like I, I was having a conversation with someone about how Kraft moved that uh, the, uh, the UMass game for homecoming. You know, you start thinking about it, and that's another game. If this was early in September, that might be the one where no one shows up to. But now you have this homecoming, and people are going to come and show up for that. So strategically, I think that was that was a good move there on his part. But as far as these these schools, I mean, you know, you win, people are going to show up. I mean, especially these right. big programs. You got teams that are going to win; they want to be part of it. People are going to show up. But you know, I think, like you said, I think you got to go more into the Mac school than you do really, because that, that's starting to get really tough because it's just, it, it's, it's too much. I don't, I don't think it's an issue of filling the stands. I mean, they've proven they can do that. I think it's now preparation for how to beat Ohio State and Michigan. Right, And right. I think if you're playing, you played to West Virginia, that was legitimate, and I think that'll help you more than playing Delaware and UMass. Well, I think the fact that you open with West Virginia that serves you well because it gave them enough things that they knew they had to work on regardless of who you play in week two. Mm. It gave them enough things that they had to work on going into week three, mm. the Big Ten opener at Illinois. So, yeah, Neil, I'm with you. I think they would be better off playing uh, lower uh, bowl championship uh, series teams. But the fact is, if they're able to do this and still put that many people in the seats, I don't think they're going to avoid necessarily doing it at all costs in the future. And we're seeing other teams do it. I mean, Ohio State did it. Mm. Uh, teams all around the nation are doing it. Yeah, I mean, I think they had a couple things that, uh, that bothered me a little bit yesterday. You had the 73 team 50 years ago. Um, you know, and, and for whatever reason, you didn't have John Capaletti there. He's your only Heisman winner. And, I mean, I think you've got to call up Capaletti in February and say, hey, what game can you get <laughs> you pick to? The and game. we yeah. will decide <laughs> right. what it is. Now, maybe Penn State didn't want to give up Michigan tickets for that game when it's very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys usually right. come in, they got to, unless they stay at Joe's house, <laughs> uh, you know, they, they have to, uh, you know, they're yeah. in a hotel. But I just think that was a little bit of a void. It was nice they had a contingent 
there, but I, I thought that was, you know. Neil uh, covered the team in 73, so Almost. that's why he's so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, well, we're going to move into our final block coming up after this break. We're going to crown our Nitwick of the Week. Don't miss a minute of Nittany Nation Overtime, now also on Apple and Spotify. The Nitwits are being brought to you by Brent Kogan Electrical Services, lighting the way for you. By Fullington Tours, offering round-trip transportation to and from Beaver Stadium from locations in State College and Altoona. By Blair Candy Company, the one-stop shop for all your tailgating needs. Candy, snacks, paper supplies, and more. By Lions 24-7 with Fight on State, your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Monday. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. Welcome back. It's time to crown our nitwit of the week. And looks like I got the win last week, boys. Uh, nice job. Nice job, that. Ryan. You Mark slipped and I your pick in. We almost didn't hear it. I had to go back on the tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mark and I tied for first this year. Um, now we're heading to Illinois, and I guess I've been told because I won, I have to pick first. Yeah, well, we have rules. Yeah. We have rules yeah, in place. Don't Alrighty. try to bend them like, like previous Geneva hosts did. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go with Penn State is going to win this one 34 to 13. Wow. I'll go next. I guess we can go in, in, in this order. I had a chance to see, and I think we probably all did, uh, Illinois playing against Kansas, and that defense just really, really struggled. I it like doesn't it. look the same as it did no, last year. and it doesn't look like the nine-overtime defense either. <laughs> I mean, the quarterback for Illinois looks pretty yeah. good, but I just it, it, the way that defense struggled and the way this offense is kind of clicking, and again, I still think Yurcich is hiding a few things that we haven't seen yet. So I think Penn State's going to play well. I'll say Penn State 35, Illinois 17. Mm. Okay, so what you're at, uh, you're at 18 and you were at 21, right? I figured it out <laughs> before right. I even got here. 41-19. Um, Don't ask me how, but I think Illinois's defense is vulnerable, and I think Penn State uh, defense still has some things to prove. So I think out there, uh, Big Ten opener. I do have a lot of respect for Bielma. Yeah, uh, but I still think Penn State is um, on a little different level. I said 41-19. And hey, remember in 2021, we thought Penn State was on another level than them, and then it went to nine overtimes. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, man, my math's not as good as Neil's, but I got to think about this for a second. I think, Take you know, I'm going to go, land on I got it. Well, <laughs> notice how he's adjusting <laughs> those $7,000 glasses as he's so what I it. So what I have to think about here is I got to think, so I, I, I had this in my mind, I had... Penn State, 38. I have um, Illinois, 24. Now, did I hit you're you? You're good. Okay. No, Your you're position. If it's low. a low-scoring low game, balling. you can slide right yeah. in. Okay, good so job. there we go, 38, yeah, 24. Enos used to wear those kind of glasses. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You got it from Jeff okay. Nally. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, it's all legal now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, you know, we can do that. I've been I deal with myself. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good deal for you, Joe. And obviously, it's a little different this year with the first Big Ten game being in week three, the previous – couple of years they've opened up on the road against a Big Ten opponent. Right, and that's been an ongoing theme. Um, you know, I, I think, hey, you're good enough. Uh, you know, this is an opportunity for, you know, Fox uh, was going to have the Fox Newt big yeah, kickoff there, it, but they're right. not going to do that because everybody's in love with uh, primetime. Uh, but, <laughs> hey, you know, that's okay. And uh, it's maybe a little lower profile may take a little pressure off a young quarterback for his first road start. Yeah, I mean, and that's kind of another thing. You know, we've seen Drew Aller at home, and most of his significant playing time has been at home. You know, really, in road games, his probably most significant action well, he saw yeah. was he actually against played, Indiana. No, no, he played well against Purdue last right. year, and then they actually had to throw him in there against Michigan. I mean, they were getting their heads handed to him, but he yeah. went in there and I thought handled himself with a plum, and then he played well at the Rose Bowl. So it's not as if he hasn't got, gotten things done away from home. I think he will be okay. I, to me, it's more some of the young receivers and stuff. Yeah, these games, a lot of times as a player, you know, it's, you know, us against the world. These guys stay together, same hotel, everything's a little tighter. Home games sometimes can be a little bit more of a distraction. A lot of a lot of people, a lot of family around. So sometimes going on the road is a really good thing. You get your core there. You know, they come out and just really do well. I mean, that, I, I think I, a guy like him, I think he's going to be fine. 
And then you throw in this is an Illinois team that had Big Ten West championship aspirations. You know, last year they were close to winning the West. Yeah, I mean, this guy you can't – they were 24-point underdog, you know, two years ago and came in here and won. Yeah. Uh, you know, granted nine overtimes, and it was really one of the more embarrassing performances. 350 or 350 under James Franklin really is kind yeah. of a rock-bottom deal, and I think he'll use that yeah. as a motivator right. this week. Well, let's hope that they can do that. Thank you so much for joining us for this week's edition of Nittany Nation yeah, Overtime. Yeah, we'll be back on next Sunday to, pr or to recap the, w or the game against Illinois. Thanks for watching WTAJ's Nittany Nation Overtime. Tonight's show is brought to you by DeLeo Games, Sisney and O'Donnell, The Student Bookstore, Joel Comfort Toyota, Legends Power Sports, and Belding and Mall. The Nitwits have been brought to you by Irwin Financial Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. By DeLeo Games, serving the community since 1945. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning. By Reed and Selaney Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntington. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886 by Remax Results Realty Group, committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service. By Dorman's Jewelry, the answer is always Dorman's. By Star Beverage, no matter what type of weather, we are a convenient drive through one-stop beer store. By Brent Kogan Electrical Services, lighting the way for you. By NovaCare, Altoona and State College, the power of physical therapy. By Fullington Tours, offering round trip transportation to and from Beaver Stadium, from locations in State College and Altoona. By Blair Candy Company, the one-stop shop for all your tailgating needs. Candy, snacks, paper supplies, and more. By Harry's Construction, if you can dream it, we can create it. By Lions 24 seven with Fight On State, your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State Game Day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Monday. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.